Hi, and welcome to the Working Differently in Extension podcast. I'm Bob Birch. Great to have you along for today's program as we welcome Dina Wise to the show. Uh, Dina is a professor and communa, excuse me, consumer economics professor at the University of, Ex- of Tennessee Extension. And um, I invited her on the show because of her commentary in the February 2017 issue of the Journal of Extension. The commentary's title is Evaluating Extension Impact on a Nationwide Level, Focus on Programs or Concepts, question mark, the question mark might be important there. Uh, Dina, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Bob. So I really enjoyed your commentary. Thank you so much for sharing your your thoughts and uh, proposed uh, solutions uh, in in Joe. Um, What drove you to write the commentary? I actually have been part of a committee for uh, family consumer sciences that's made up of specialists in that area across the the nation. And um, we've done a little talk about this, but before that, I think just my experience over many years in extension and and trying different evaluation methods and and settling on one that seemed to work uh, more than anything made me want to write the commentary. And so the idea of the commentary is that we're probably, we might not be doing such a great job of showing our impact on a nationwide level. Why do you, th- why do you think that's the case? Or Well, I think partly it stems from our, um, our diff- different, the autonomy of the different state systems that we have here and there, and that we have the freedom state by state to choose whatever evaluation methods we we need or, or find best for our state. Uh, part of it, I think, has to do with the that um, that we have not uh, in the past competed for funding as much as maybe other organizations might. And we've not had the need to show the scale and scope of our work across the nation. Our most of the stakeholders who were interested in our outcomes were at the state state level or regional or local levels. So. Uh, those are two reasons I think that we may not have looked at a comprehensive type of system that would do some uh, record some of our impacts and outcomes as as a national system. So, so you mentioned the competition in the commentary. You mentioned you know agencies that might be competing with extension um, that might not have the national capacity and scale that extension does but are still competing for the you know for funding uh, do you have like examples in mind of that i mean sometimes when we talk about who are extensions competitors people have trouble figuring out what that is because there's not very many people who do what we do on the scale that we do it right well well i do have examples from from my subject area which is consumer economics and um a few years ago, during the financial crisis, there was a lot of, of federal money and grant money from private sources uh, available for teaching financial education. And much of that money went to agencies and organizations such as um, uh, the library boards and United Way that really didn't have any prior experience in financial education, didn't, uh, didn't know uh, really didn't know the the discipline, didn't understand the concepts that needed to be taught, and didn't had never had any experience in methodology or how to teach it. So those are just a couple of examples that I can give from from my area. So when we're competing with those kinds of groups for funds, um, I I think you know from the from your commentary. I guess what you're saying is if we had a way to show the nationwide impact um, that, that we might, might better compete with that, with those other, other organizations, uh, do you think that's, obviously you think that's the case, I guess. I'm just wondering, uh, I'm just wondering to myself if you know, maybe there's something else going on there. Maybe it's funders looking at local impact or maybe it's funders 
uh, looking for different ways or, you know, it, is it that we're not showing our impact or is it that we're not very good at messaging about the other stuff that we do? Or maybe it's both. Well, I think it is both. And uh, part, partly it's a matter of marketing and getting the message out. But on the other hand, uh, I don't think there are any or other organizations that have better scope, national scope, as far as education goes, the uh, uh, capability to deliver educational programs. And it's, it, I think that's a piece of the, that puzzle, being able to show our scope and our capability to, do, uh, to, to get things done on a national level. And we've, we've done that in the past. We did that in the 30s and 40s. Uh, you know, we were the answer when the U.S. government was looking for ways to help people make mattresses from uh, from cotton or uh, do things on a national level and uh, so we need to be I think we need to be back in the position where when there's a national need emerging we are the people who come to mind yeah that's interesting because um there has to be then I guess if we're going to have a national response to something there has to be national cooperation on some of that and that's just not that's not been my experience right it's like every every state if there's an issue uh like here in the midwest every state has extension service has its own response right and even when we do try to do multi-state programming particularly multi-state responses to uh for example, RFPs that are asking for something that's regional or national in scope, we have some real barriers um, if you get outside the research system of the land-grant land grant universities extension system. When we try to work together, we have, for example, uh, different um, f and requirements, and we have different uh, uh, offices, the names of our offices are all different, where we need to have, uh, you know, grants programs or sponsored programs, who we need to work with. It's even hard to find out from university to university who makes those decisions. And sometimes within the university, when those questions are asked, nobody knows who makes those decisions. So those are barriers that we need to overcome. So I think that's part of the piece, but being able to show national impact is also part of the piece. And that's the part of the piece that seems to have risen to the level of national discussion lately, how we're going to evaluate nationally. So that was sort of why I, I focused on that aspect of it in this one article. Yeah, and I think that your, uh, your I don't know if I want to, if you're comfortable calling it a proposed solution or a path to a solution or something like that, but um, I think it's very, it's really interesting. And so you talk about changing our evaluation focus a little bit um, away from focusing our evaluation on programs. Can you explain what you mean by focusing our evaluation on programs? Well, I, uh, I guess I need to say up front that I don't necessarily think that we should never focus on programs or evaluate programs on a national scope level. I, I do believe that we should, but I think that can't be all that we do. If we do, we miss some of our greatest programming strengths, and that's the diversity of, of educational methods and, and ways of approaching things across the U.S. So rather than finding signature programs, for example, in each of the knowledge areas that we might uh, focus on in extension, uh, it's my thought that we need to find common concepts that we teach and measure those across the U.S. For example, and I'm, I'm using uh, my topic area again, financial education, and there have been some really great signature programs, national signature programs in financial education. But they come and go, and if you, if you measure those at one point, then they're, they're their use, their life cycle will, will pass and then you'll have to measure something else. But all of those programs teach the similar concepts. For example, we might in financial education, in many, many programs we teach how to develop a spending plan or how to uh, calculate your net worth or how to do a financial plan for life, those kinds of things. So if we focus on measuring how many people learn those skills or that attain that knowledge rather than 
measuring the impact of the program itself, I think that would be a more uh, sustainable evaluation uh, system for it. Yeah, I could see where that uh, that sort of shift in focus could also be effective just like inside of a state. I mean, if we're evaluating program by program, are are we able to say anything about a difference that we've made on a broader issue? Like, you know, like food, nutrition, like we take something like uh, public health. We have a number of programs here in North Dakota that might address that issue. And if we're evaluating each program individually and not looking at our broader impact on public health, are we really communicating our value? Yes, I totally agree with that. And we've actually, here in Tennessee, in our FCS programs are shifting from measuring programs to measuring concepts. We've actually uh, come to agreement on a list of competencies that we hope agents have to teach certain concepts, and we're changing our evaluation system to measure uh, how we teach those concepts and the impacts that we make in those areas rather than the outcomes of the programs themselves. I had a question in mind and I've lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. Oh, I, I know what I was going to ask you about that. There's an interesting phrase that you, a uh, couple of sentences that were included in the commentary, and I apologize if it's, if I'm digging a little too deeply here, but um, in the commentary you mentioned, uh, you say it's a common belief uh, among extension specialists that local educators should, uh, shouldn't vary from prescribed curricula. And I've kind of found that pretty interesting. Um, I'm not saying I, I, I don't fall on one side of the opinion or the other. I just thought, hmm, okay, that's interesting. And I, I wonder what you think about that, about that view. Do you agree with it? Or what do you, if you don't agree, what do you see some of the problems with that kind of idea of sticking to prescribed programming might be? Well, I think in some cases it's necessary, particularly if we're doing a program that has a, a established parameters and there has to be fidelity to the program in order to evaluate it the way it was intended to evaluate, to be evaluated or to have the intended outcomes. So, so I'm not saying that, there, that it's a, there isn't a place for that in, in extension or in extension programs. But um, I've also noticed that many specialists are, can be insistent on their program, um, you having fidelity to their program even when they don't have the evaluation that depends on it or the learning process or progress that depends on it. And in that case, it's probably uh, not as important to the learner's outcomes as it is to uh, maybe that specialist knowing how, how that program was used and, uh, and what the outcomes were for that specific program. So I think we have to keep in mind our ultimate goal. Ultimately, we serve the taxpayers and we serve the audience of the land grant universities, which are our broader clientele in the state. So uh, while, you know, we do, I think we all want credit for our intellectual property and we all want to be sure that it's used in a way that we intended it to be used, Ultimately, since we work for state universities, our, our duty is to inform our clientele and to bring whatever we discover at our universities to bear for, for them and for what's best in their lives. So, so we, we have to balance that. It's not an all or nothing thing. We have to balance our own interest in our own intellectual property with uh, what it can do when that information is out there reaching people. Now, one of the things you mentioned in the commentary, too, is about um, it, it sort of uh, following up on this idea of, of, you know, fidelity to a prescribed program and those kinds of things is that, you know, a lot of times, uh, and I'm paraphrasing you here, so I apologize if I get anything wrong, but um, that the issues and in, in audience are dynamic. And by the time we start with an issue and get through this long process of program development and delivery and evaluation, uh, maybe the issue has changed or the audience has changed. Yes, and that's, that's really often the case, I think, in programs where uh, evaluation has to be established or, or impact 
uh, an effect has to be established over time. That by the time you've you've established that impact, which sometimes can take months or even years, uh, that that it is an effective program. Uh, by the time you've proven that, uh, the needs are new. You know, <laughs> so so we can't ever just rest on our laurels. Even when we find a program that has that established uh, impact. So, so do you think the idea of evaluating on um, the concepts and uh, behavior change and the learning tasks like you propose would fit better in, so, in sort of a dynamic situation like that and what we're looking at? I really do because uh, one thing that's common uh, is that a, a state specialist will uh, write a curricula and then we'll send it out or a curriculum and then we'll send it out to agents and the agents will take two or three aspects of that curriculum and they will teach that either be because they don't have an audience for the other part of the curriculum or there's not enough time to to do it all and um, so we need to be able to capture whatever concepts they've taught and whatever learning has been uh, has been accomplished during that time and incorporate it into our the scope of our evaluation. So I think evaluating concepts is a way to do that. You know, anytime we talk about doing something uh, throughout the system, um, you've, you've already mentioned it, so I won't call it an elephant in the room, that's the wrong <laughs> analogy, but it's, you know, this idea of state autonomy and everybody's got their own evaluation system and everybody's got uh, their own way of doing things. Um, and, we, and we like to, uh, at least internally, I feel like we like to point out our differences a lot. Well, yeah, that might work in Tennessee, but you haven't been to North Dakota, so, you know. Um, but, but you do mention in the commentary that you think this, uh, this idea, you know, really could augment uh, rather than replace the current sis state systems. Can you, can you explain why you think that it could be, you know, uh, sort of value added rather than substituting one for the other? Uh, yes, and, and that partly goes back to what I said at the beginning, that I think there are signature programs that have enough footprint across the U.S. that we do need to measure their impact as programs themselves. But then there's all this leftover stuff that maybe individual agents are doing in their counties, and that's where we can capture, I think, using the method of capturing concept, concept learner, learning. Whenever we, um, well, I shouldn't say whenever, I don't know this, I guess, but often there are unintended consequences. You know, I think of how we, uh, you know, our, our current federal reporting, you know, quarterly program reports and annual program reports and, and the fact that when we report, you know, number of direct contacts that could have an unintended consequence of, you know, educators potentially focusing on quantity over quality, for instance, of, of contact. Do you think that there might be unintended consequences of uh, either our focus on programs? I think we've talked a little bit about that, but maybe also of of changing the focus as you've proposed onto these learning objectives or learning uh, concepts and, and tasks. Well, I think that probably no matter how we measure, there's going to always be that balance between quality and quantity that we have to have to reach. So, uh, so yes, I do think there might be unintended consequences. We, um, I know here in, in Tennessee, several years ago, we, well, we re, um, revamped our evaluation system, made a whole new evaluation system, and I was on the initial committee and uh, to, to look at how we might, the parameters we might set for the new system. And one of the things that we decided was that we didn't need to measure everything everything we were doing. You know, there were only certain uh, concepts that uh, that we did, our programs that we did statewide that we would need to measure. But then when we started to try to decide what we would measure, people whose programs were left out of that measurement felt like they didn't matter. So that's sort of a hard barrier to overcome. And I think by measuring concepts rather than programs, we will be able to include, to be more inclusive of, of what people are teaching, regardless of it, of whether it fits into the broader state agenda. 
So you outlined some steps for sort of moving this this forward, and folks, you, you can read that in the in the Journal of Extension article. I just wonder, do you have any plans, or or where do you take this idea next, or? Uh, you know, is it like, hey, I, I did my part. I, I put it out there. Somebody <laughs> jump on, right? <laughs> well, it is. There is a little bit of that because uh, Joy is a good vehicle for if you just if you have a an idea and you think nobody else is listening, <laughs> you know, you get it out there. Right. <laughs> and so there's a, there's a little bit of that. It's it's an idea, but I'm also uh, I've I've sort of tried to uh, to listen and to be in on this discussion in my field when we are talking about evaluating uh, nationally. And, and you sort of made the point that, that this might be where it starts, right? Is that it, in each specialty area, um, maybe this is a little bit more about, uh, you know, uh, cons consumer economics people or personal finance people and food and nutrition people on a national level making this move rather than the daunted, you know, directors of each state or something. Right, right? <laughs> <laughs> and and certainly, certainly, it's it's at that level that I have the capability to to make more impact because you know I can't make decisions any higher than than. In fact, <laughs> specialists don't make a lot of decisions at all about those kinds of things. <laughs> Well, uh, I'm glad you shared your idea, and I, I was listening, uh, now our Working Differently Extension podcast listeners are listening as well, uh, and uh, we really appreciate you joining us today on the podcast. Oh, thanks so much for the opportunity, Bob. Dina Wise is a professor and consumer economics specialist at the University of Tennessee Extension. She's the author of a commentary in the Journal of Extension uh, called Evaluating Extension Impact on a Nationwide Level, Focus on Programs or concepts. You've been listening to the Working Differently in Extension podcast. Thanks so much for joining us. A couple of reminders, check us out on Twitter. The Twitter handle is at WDNEXT. Show notes at BobBirch.com and all the podcasts. This is episode, I believe, 107. All the podcasts available on SoundCloud, soundcloud.com slash Working Differently. Thanks again for joining us. Have a great day.